You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Visit bpn.fm to discover more. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And hi, I'm Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Liz Esten. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew and Liz to like musical theater. How are we doing today? Well, I'm your killer. Oh, again? Yep. Although it's in the future or the past. Kind of depends how you put it. Does that anyway, make Liz here's death? my story or your story. Um, I guess I'm death. I don't know. Yeah. Two in a row where we got death as one of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Death is much l- more horny in this one than the last one, though, which death is, is very a detriment horny, to the last one. I am not that Fucking horny. Fucking God. I'm going to be real here. Death should be horny. I feel like death is like a horny subject. I feel like death should be a sexual masochist. Like, come on. Yeah. European musicals. In case you haven't picked this up, <laughs> we are talking about the very famous uh, musical Elizabeth Das Musical. Cue the music. The world premiere of Elizabeth, directed by Harry Kumpfer, took place on September 3rd, 1992 at the Theater on der Wein in Vienna, Austria, where it ran until January of 1997. That is five years on stage. Um, the story portrays the life and death of Empress Elizabeth of Australia. Austria. Fuck me. Australia. <laughs> Austria. <laughs> well then, good day, mate. <laughs> We're gonna. We got a good episode today. It portrays the yeah. life and death of Empress Elizabeth of Austria, also known as Cece, wife of Emperor Franz Joseph the First, from her engagement and marriage in 1854 to her murder in 1898 at the hands of the Italian anarchist Luigi Luceni, through the lens of her growing obsession with death as her marriage and her empire crumble around her at the turn of the century. Um. Yeah. Weird Euro musicals, am I right? Yeah. And by weird, you mean good, right? Incredible. They are doing it better than Americans and always have, and even better than the Londoners. Riddle me this, Batman. I'm ready. This came out in fucking 1992? Yes. And there's no American version of it? Uh... And I can't find it on Spotify? Not a single <laughs> English-speaking uh, country has brought about Elizabeth. Um, maybe the themes just wouldn't translate? I feel so attacked by this whole thing. It's traveled Europe and France and Asia. Um, like there are very famous, like all female Takazuma productions. Please forgive me for the pronunciation of everything I say in this entire fucking. I... We have talked about three uh, other musicals from Kunze and Levey um, on this show. Um, that would be Mozart, Rebecca and Elizabeth. So, like this is the third one. Mozart was good. Rebecca was a mess. <laughs> it, it was it was okay. It was it was some of the music in that is still pretty good though. Yes. I but mean, tell me you're not still sometimes like Rebecca. Like I'm I on. didn't sing it like that. Rebecca. Oh well that's because you, you can't sing. That's yes. okay. That is not insane. everybody can sing. Well no, because it's much lower. <laughs> it's like Rebecca. Um, Rebecca is easily the less, least good of all three. Rebecca is also the only one that was ever almost in America. <laughs> it was so close. And then it all fell apart famously, um, as you will see in an incredible video by Staged Right um, and no other videos. Um, so what do we all think about Elizabeth Das musical? OK. OK. I think that the music in this was fucking incredible. 
and maybe I'm going too far. Maybe maybe I'm easily impressed. I do feel easily easily impressed this week, I guess. Easily impressed by Euro musicals. I always am easily impressed by Euro musicals, I won't lie. But they just they do it, man. They do it so well. They do it better. Um I was middling on this one, not gonna lie. Really? You didn't think the music was great? Music was great. Music was good. The staging, the set design, all of that was wonderful. I just didn't feel myself very engaged with the plot outside of the moments when Death and Elizabeth were trying the fuck. Okay, but to be to be real though, when those came, if you know what I'm saying, um, yes. pun intended, uh, <laughs> the it was really good. It was really good. Um, I think I described this to you over text as the Phantom of the Opera with um. Sorry, as a Vita with Phantom of the Opera sprinkles. <laughs> like, what if you took a Vita and just decided to throw the Phantom of the Opera in there every now and then? So basically, what if this was the best Andrew Lloyd Webber musical <laughs> of all time? Yes, you are <laughs> yeah. definitely pitching this. Yeah. And if it was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, <laughs> this would be 100% the best Andrew Lloyd Webber musical of all time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truly, this show impressed me. And it is short. It is like a tight, like, like 120 minutes. It does not waste your time at all. It goes through this no. woman's life. It deals with things very succinctly. Um, and it has like this weird kind of death mysticalism to it. That's my favorite part of it. And I really love how it like ends as well. Yeah, we're just, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the whole thing. <laughs> it does deal a lot with like political intrigue that I don't know if I particularly understood and a lot of like interpersonal bullshit between like her husband and her mother-in-law and like all that kind of stuff where I'm like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I just was not particularly interested. However, when we get to the point where she starts losing people, like like her children and all that, that's when yep. it gets really powerful. And when she becomes the independent woman as opposed to like the wilting flower that she was kind of falling into the trope of in act one then i kind of found myself actively engaging a bit more um but andrew could you explain the plot to me at all um <laughs> i'm here to help okay Liz is gonna have to help a lot um i got you so this is the story of an actual person uh empress elizabeth of austria not australia good day mate <laughs> Good day, um, Mike. <laughs> um, who, um, I, from my brief readings on on Wikipedia, they they seem like a a bad person. Am I much am like I a Vita? Yeah. Very yeah. misunderstood. I wouldn't say misunderstood. Embraced by her culture. No, no, no. Embraced by her culture for things that aren't really representative of who she was. So a lot of her people that she was much like a Vita thought she was sainted, thought she was this wonderful thing, when really she was kind of doing some less than savory things behind the scenes that really come to light later. Um, I think there was like a very so, famous film that framed uh, Susie, uh, Cece as like this beautiful duchess and like such a gorgeous queen and all that, uh, or empress. Um, and that is what they're making fun of in the act two opening number, Kitsch. Wie wär's mit diesem Bild? Elisabeth als Mutter mit Rudolf, ihrem Sohn, hä? Oder hier, ist das nicht nett? Die Kaisers feiern Weihnacht im festlichen Salon. Auf diesem Glas sehen sie, das hohe Paar in Liebe zu den Neigt. Prost, einen Teller hab ich auch, die Elisabeth beim Beten in der Hofkapelle zeigt. Nehmt ein hübsches Souvenir mit aus der kaiserlichen Welt. Alles innig, lieb und sinnig, so wie es euch gefällt. But <coughs> she um she has like an obsession with death in a way, and death sort of follows her. Um, a lot of people die in this, and then she dies. Um. And the story is opened and sort of narrated by the person who kills her. Um, there, there is a lot going on. It's in German. Uh, it's all subtitles. This would be really good if it had an English version, so I would be able to better tell what the fuck's happening. But, I mean, Liz, why don't you cover some of the more detailed aspects that I'm not covering here? 
There's a lot that happens here. Oh, God. So Sissy, which I learned is a new nickname that I have, new nickname option I have. That's things I've learned while watching this. Sissy. <laughs> I have like 17 nickname options as an Elizabeth. Yeah, Sissy, uh, due to some weird, wacky bullshit, like, and this is in history, wacky bullshit. Uh, her sister is going to marry the Duke, the prince guy that Elizabeth ends up marrying. And the real historical reason, which is in the show, is she was, Sissy was wearing black when they met, which made her stand, her beauty stand out more. And her sister was wearing pink. So the prince was like, I don't think she's very hot. I don't want to marry her. And insi- and the prince insisted, I'm going to marry this 16 year old girl and you cannot stop me. Gross. I must marry this 16 year old girl. And so after a week, she succumbed. She's like, okay, I'll marry the 16 year old. Okay, we'll get married. It's fine. Then it took, like, a week to consummate the marriage. Maybe. It's disputed. Uh, they have kids. The mother-in-law steals the kids immediately because she's evil. Like, yeah, it's a very evil. unpleasant character, Which she was in real life, apparently, according to historical records. So, you know. I mean, they're... It's like royal family stuff. They're all yeah. evil. Like, come on. Yeah, they're all evil. They're all... They're, it's all fucking monarchy. It's all an incest uh, pile. Yeah, it really is. Death also appears periodically. I won't mention that, but like, Death shows up a lot. And Death is pre- the best part of this musical, and we'll talk yeah. about him at length eventually, but that's not really important right here. Yeah, anyway, so she has two daughters. They're mad. She finally has a son, but the son is also taken away, like the daughters are taken. The son ends up being dying via a murder-suicide with his lover at the time. Like later on, it's been it was known historically as like the Mayerling incident, I think. Yeah, based on the hunting lodge they were in. Uh, I did a lot of research while watching this because I didn't heard of her and I'm a nerd. So I just do research. And I no, this is good people. information to have. Um, yeah. And all of this, while it does sound dense, it comes at you so fast. Like all the stuff is so much at you. There's no like there's no pausing to do. Uh, exposition type stuff. It's it it's all run on. It run it run. Her life is very mm-hmm. fast. Like and it it's an operetta, so it's all back to back music too, which I think yeah. is very effective. And it's all told from the point of view of her an inevitable terrorist killer. Um, and let's just jump to that point. So she, she's been avoiding death and like meeting him and bumping into him several times throughout until her eventual death and what i i still don't quite understand his politics i don't quite know all that so explain that to me liz uh, i'm having trouble understanding his politics he's a he's a, he was known as an italian anarchist so he probably for hates what the I, royals yeah so he just really hates like a lot of just he hates people from what i can gather no wonder i can really pinpoint why he killed her like exactly it's which just, i like, think is a very hap- effective it's good go to have him as like our narrator if we don't really know his motivations because we can latch on whatever motivation the authors might want onto him much yeah. like che Guevara in evita yeah yeah um yeah he was he was sentenced to life in prison because capital punishment didn't exist in geneva at the time um and he died in prison good for him so. um did a horrible uh, thing yeah. went to prison died there yeah. Also, the documentation of the autopsy was destroyed at some point in history. So we don't have any Wonder documentation why. of what happened to her. So. I'm sure that's just yeah. normal things. He probably just shot her. No, he no, stabbed her in the stab. heart, allegedly. It was a stab. She was a stab below her left breast with a wooden handled four inch knife. I wonder if he just like happened to be on the same boat as her. And was just like, <laughs> oh, shit. That's that person I hate. Stab. I'm an anarchist. Let's go. <laughs> Well, this will create anarchy, you know. Ooh, and I'm Italian, so you know, might as well. <laughs> Problem solved. We fixed it. Um, yes. Well, now that we've hit <laughs> the facts, let's talk about the heightened reality where death is personified as sometimes androgynous, sometimes less androgynous, a highly masculine figure of this sexy rock god that's flirting with everyone until they he makes out with them to kill them. Literally, the kiss of death kills so many people in this. Um, and it, death appears in many different forms, sometimes in drag, sometimes just presently, very often as a subducting kind of presence. Um, and he is wonderful. Um, truly, anytime he is on screen, it is the best part of it. It also shows 
Elizabeth as receptive at times to death um, being an emotional kind of a romantic partner, which a lot of people has interpreted as her suicidal ideation, basically flirting with death and a representation of her own suicidal um, side. Um, and that's iffy. That's that's like dark things to play with. I wish they kind of lent into that more, but I know we're dealing with a real person. Um, Andrew, a thousand years ago when we covered Evita, you were very weary about covering real people in heightened musical ways without like a bull. You kind of both sides in that episode. Um, I'm like, well, I feel like we shouldn't do this now that this is so incredibly heightened and so entirely removed. What is your opinion on this? You know, I think I've had a, a come around on that and I feel like I am more okay with it now. Um, both in this and in Evita. Mm-hmm. I think I, I kind of see what they're going for now more than I did then. And I think it's, it's probably a good way to do it. it. It makes a story that could be really boring and like historical, more um, emotional and like readable to an audience. Um, this may just be on my mind um, because okay. last night I saw Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, four hours, no exaggeration. Jesus. Four, four Jesus. hours in a movie I'm theater. Sorry, that's too long. That's too I, long I don't long care to be how good theater. your movie You need is. a goddamn intermission. Like the movie was wonderful. But no movie needs to be four hours long. But I know Thelma Shoemaker said like none, but no, we need it. I will say I was never bored. Like four hours, I was not once bored. Um, But it shows you like the most horrific imagery that I've ever seen. And then the movie ends like its epilogue is spoilers for Killers of the Flower Moon. Skip ahead, I guess. Um, Is it is a radio play of people taking and summing up the rest of these people's lives as entertainment for a cheering, clapping, a laughing audience. And then for the last person, like little, where where are they now? Martin Scorsese himself steps on camera and just reads it. And that is the end of the film where he is actively saying you are complicit and turning this genocide into entertainment just as much as I am. And you're enjoying it, Um, which is in incredibly harrowing but i that is kind of changed the way i view a lot of representations of true events on screen of taking true people that did horrendous things and then kind of romanticizing them which for better I, or for worse this kind of does i can agree with that though i feel like you you run into a rabbit hole which i, I feel like what you just talked about sort of acknowledges it where it's like now you just can't do anything yes. right it's like So, like, okay, do you not make a really good movie slash musical about this topic because of that? Or do you reference the fact that you are making it into entertainment? Or, like, it it gets to a point where it's like, is it ever ethical to do anything? And it's just like, well, kind of yes, but also kind of no. (laughs) (laughs) And nothing's ethical, which is part of the reason why I love that ending so much, where it's like, yeah, I know this is fucked up, and you know it's fucked up, but we're all still here. <laughs> you showed yeah. up anyways. Yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about the controversy with the different interpretations of death over the years. So Yeah, you wanted to bring that up. You, yeah. you were about to. Um, death in the original production, androgynous, um, and any time he kills anyone, it is a seduction ending in a very blatant kiss. Like, man, woman, doesn't matter. The next the version- kiss of death. Literally. The next version, um, I think that original was Uwe Kroger, who is a great Aust- uh, Vienna actor. Um, I've seen him in other things like Dracula, Das Musical. Um, then we got another actor who said, well, he did it so well, I'm going to play mine a little bit more masculine, kind of remove the androgyny. And since this is supposed to be a representation of Elizabeth's favorite poet, um, I forget the name of the poet, but apparently that is supposed to be a representation of, representation of that poet. Heinrich Hein. Yes. Heinrich Hein. I, Elizabeth was a heterosexual woman. He was a heterosexual man. So I'm going to play it strictly heterosexual. The kiss was still there, but he was just much more masculine and less androgynous. And that was the performance we watched. Like that was kind of the middle ground. Um, Apparently I had some David things- Bowie in there too. Oh, definitely. Apparently, yeah, as well. You can see yeah. it very much in there. Um, very labyrinth. Um, as time progressed on, they kept pushing it more masculine and 
removed a lot of the more homoerotic side and wrote even a brand new song for um, Elizabeth and Death to Sing together to embrace like the Phantom of the Opera kind of nature of them. Um, the song is called the I've Got a Case of the Not Gays. <laughs> it's really bad. I'm not gay. <laughs> Death and we gay. are straight. We are straight. We are so very straight. Um, but when the, the show was revived again in 2022, their excuse was COVID, where they removed a lot of the male kiss, almost basically all the male kissing, but they kept the kiss between Death and Elizabeth. You can't use COVID as an excuse if you include one kiss. Exactly. Come on. Come on. Fuck that. Um, where we just kind of made death more heteronormative. And as progressive as we've gotten, we've kind of gotten a little bit more conservative with this specific character from over 30 years' time. Yeah. Time to go back. But yeah, let's time, go back. Time to Can roll we go back. backwards for once? Like, Jesus Christ. Is there, there going to be any new performances of oh, this? Oh, yeah, they're doing a brand new version of this. Like, every 10 years, they basically bring Elizabeth back. Yeah, there's... There but never to the States. Never in the 2022. States. 2022. Why? Yeah. Did this come after Rebecca? Um, no, this is before Rebecca. So, so that's not even why. Okay, so why, why is there no States version? I really want to know. I just don't imagine this doing very well in the States. Sincerely. You really don't think so? I think the argument would be very hard to make when the most highest running Broadway show currently is like, you know, the Disney shit. Lion King. But what else is on there? Like, like right now, that's, that's the only thing that is, is playing on Broadway. So it's like, what, what do you... What are we when is the last time something like this was popular on Broadway? Can you even think? Like, Great Comet tried to do something interesting like this, and they flopped so badly. I mean, like, Les Mis. That was yeah, but even every revival of Les Mis is kind of diminishing returns. I mean, sure, but those are revivals. What if something new that was like Les Mis came out? Yeah. I don't know. Um, the Takarus... Ta- I want to say this right. Um, do you know anything about Takarzuka? Uh productions uh, in japan i'll be honest i don't so um that is probably as far as this has gone that is all female production so that is like a proper kind of cultural thing in japan where they will put on like they did the uh phantom musical that we saw that was very famously done there um and this had a very prominent thing and all the kissing was left in despite it being in japan (laughs) Okay. This has reached so far and wide. This is one of the most popular worldwide musicals of all time. It just hasn't hit any English-speaking countries yet. And sadly, I, as much as I appreciate and respect the show and like felt creatively invigorated, I found myself emotionally muted. Um, I felt myself kind of apathetically connected to it. I was only appreciating the aesthetics and the general feeling of vibes rather than actively engaging with the story, the narrative, the characters, and as a piece. And I feel that is probably on me more than it is on the show because the show was obviously doing something right. The, visually, we haven't even talked about the staging, how so many sets, so many different sets throughout it. Truly incredible. It's, it's, a, it's a fucking European show yeah. that isn't from England. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Every time we cover one of these, we're just like, where the fuck? How is it so good? Yeah. And like, it, you said something about how they fund the uh, the arts there. And yes. like, is, is this government funded? This was you think? commissioned by, the, by the, the government. The United Stages of Vienna. It's a production company, but basically by Vienna. And it is one of several musicals like Tons der Vampire, Mozart, Rebecca were all commissioned by this theater run by the state of Vienna. And, and you, you Americans are going to look at me and be like, capitalism's the way. Come on. Come on. Look at, look at what Broadway is pumping out and compared to this shit. Oh, yeah. Tell Mrs. me that Doubtfire. the government can't do anything right. Yeah. T- tell me. Yeah. Tell me that the government doesn't do anything right. They like, also funded on. a Barbarella musical, so. That's hey. fucking gold. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's kind of sick. There's no negatives here. I, I'm totally for that. Um, yeah. I just my tax dollars should be going towards this, not towards. I don't want to get too topical. <laughs> <laughs> um, towards you know a certain genocide. <laughs> yeah, the, the the flower moon. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. Let's not do that. Um, but speaking of everything, um, how about Liz? Why don't you tell us a little bit about? I I put a tweet out there asking yes. if anyone had a big opinions on Elizabeth Doss musical. And I do that a lot for like things I'm like, I want to know the general consensus of. This had a mm-hmm. 
a big response, to say the least. It has. It has. All right, what people do we got? like this one? People right, love we have this quite one. They a have bit. Deep passion. We do. We have some mix. We have um, a user whose name is literal Jesus Christ, and I'm not even joking. Um, oh, they got the name. Who said love the concept, but love the concept, not loving the execution. Which we also I can some, understand. We also have a lot of positive ones. Someone was intri- intrigued just by the picture you tweeted, so they'll probably check it out and also become a fan. Um, Juliet Antonio, our keeper of the cheese. Yes. Hopped in and said, "There's one high note death sings in Pianamisio. Pianamisio? I can't talk. Uh, that made my soul leave my body. Very Juliet thing to say. Very in very character. Juliet. Yeah. All uh, Faye Rivera said, "All I know is that I belong to me lives in my head rent free." party nice. said death is at his best when he's played by an androgynous woman in the Japanese version that I'm not going to try to say the word because I can barely speak at this point in my Which life. Which uh, I almost completely yeah. agree with. I feel like more women productions of this show would be interesting or having a woman play death would be oh, yeah. fascinating or even a gender neutral gen- non-binary would be a wonderful choice. Oh yeah, definitely a non-binary like gender fuck type of thing. Takara Zuka. Yes. Car is, oh, you nailed it in the first one. Fuck you. Amazing. I didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, overall, the uh, the Twitter there, which has very good responses, I would check it out on Jess's Twitter if you want to hear any more wonderful opinions. But it's it has a lot of positivity. Like it's very good. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, uh, all the songs have great effect on me. There's some a tweet well, from the person who requested this on Broadway. So <laughs> so you guys know what to do. I'm talking to you producers that listen to our show. All uh, zero of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I did want to shout out A Good Nighttime Comes So Rarely, a blog and podcast um, where they have a really good, deep appreciation for Elizabeth Das musical. Um, truly good. If you really want a good, like, educated vibe on what's going on in Euro theater, that is a good place to start, and you will get a lot of good info from there. Um, so please check them out at gar- garlicgothic.altervista.org. Um, truly, if you want some good material, check that out. Um, all right. How about we go into a mid-show? I found a quote from the guy who killed Elizabeth. So He said, in a newspaper pretending to be uh, he originally planned to kill the Duke of Orleans, but apparently just couldn't couldn't find him. That's literally the only reason that that Duke didn't die. Um, he sent he wrote to a Geneva newspaper the in an, under a pseudonym the following quote: "I am an anarchist by conviction. I came to Geneva to kill a sovereign with the object of giving an example to those who suffer and those who do nothing to improve their social position. It did not matter to me who the sovereign was, whom I should kill." It was not a woman I struck, but an empress. It was a crown I had in view. So, hey, hates money. Fair enough. So, yeah, he just yeah, he just happened to be in the same place as her, and it was like he oh, couldn't find the original time. guy. So he's like, "Fuck it, I'll kill this lady." Reminds me of Mark David Chapman, who killed John Lennon, who had a plan to kill like five other people too, and John Lennon just seemed like the easiest. Like his original plan was to go to Broadway, see George C. Scott, shoot him, then run and go kill John Lennon. Like he that. He was unhinged, truly an unhinged guy. Why? Why John Lennon? I never yeah, why understood John Lennon? that. Like, he was like, obsessed. What did John Lennon do? Uh, he was a fundamentalist Christian at a certain point who was obsessed with John okay, Lennon. Never, you explained it all already. Yeah, you I got, got it. it. 
<laughs> and when John Lennon said, you know, the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, um, and imagine there's no heaven, um, a lot of, none of the good reasons to kill John Lennon, like, you know, yeah. the white beating you, thing. You, just, you said everything when you said fundamentalist, fundamentalist Christian, I, under, I understood it immediately. He's still alive in prison, I wonder if people write to him. That is a sincere question. If you write to Chris Watts, I, I'll that. write to him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write to him. I'm gonna send a letter every single day with all of the lyrics from Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, just do one lyric per letter. Just torture him. <laughs> Imagine there's no heaven. Heaven. No, it's no. What easy. you should send if him you, every try. day is a VHS of the celebrity singing Imagine from the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill out of you. Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon, including this specific episode, which was a Patreon request episode from our patron, Angela, who tends to request a lot of these Euro musicals. So yeah, thank you, Angela, and I hope I hope we did your show justice. Uh... Our current patrons are... <clears throat> Melissa Goldman, Danielle Rennix, Peasant Chick, Jess the Stampede, Ewan Cassidy, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Lasagna Stacey Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Mary Lou Choquette, John Van Alles, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Emily Gracie, Kyle Summers, Janae C, Scoot and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Liz Lim, Nothing is Certain Except Beth and Taxes, Thespian, Robert Benjamin, Jessica T, Mitchell Young, Chai Teacup, Chris Marcote, TJ Marie Anastasio, Tre- Trevi Joseph, Leela, RJ Nariga, Julia McLannan, uh, Bjorn Hermans, Toriana Frazier, Sammy the Adequate Amount Jacobson, Angela, Kaylee Blazier, Cinemageddon Reviews, Villainous Miss, Sofina Ali, The Omega Geek, Paige Pearson, Maddie Wargle, Eliza Erdman, Anna Luskatova, Sarah Den Blaker, Evan Ball, Zachary Therese, uh, Rora Marasso, Mara Forloin, Lisa L, po- Possessed Washing Machine, I almost said Poisoned Washing Machine, that's not Wouldn't right. that be great? Um, A Poisoned Washing <laughs> Nick- Machine. <laughs> Nick Rowe 10, uh, Puffy Boy, uh, Julia Hardy, Sydney Hicks, Anna Bell, Billy Clifton, Andrew Wright, The Red Caboose Kaboom, uh, Gold Plated Kiki Mora, and Julia Balder's Daughter. These fuckers give us money. You want to give us money? We'll give you a Dear Evan Hansen commentary. Um, yeah, let's talk about Elizabeth, I guess. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about me? I'm kidding. <laughs> We haven't made that joke yet. No, we haven't made the joke that my name is Elizabeth. Um, The show opens with, I want to say the prologue is just like a court case for uh, Lucini. Uh, Lucini? Yeah. um, Between death, a judge, and Lucini. And it's a weird kind of opening for what is not that heightened a show. I know we talk about the Grim Reaper death being in it a lot, but it's not that heightened. So it is a very kind of carousel style opening for a very grounded musical about politics. Sie weichen aus, Lucini. Liebe, Tod. Erzählen Sie keine Märchen. Herr Kenner, Sie liebte Heinrich Heine. Zum letzten Mal, Lucini. Wer waren Ihre Hintermänner? Der Tod. Nur der Tod. Das Motiv, Lucchini. Die Liebe. Und Grande. Amore. Elisabeth. 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 I still really like it, though. Yeah. Although, I think that that's just kind of, anytime death is, is here, it's like, you know it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the point part where I don't really know what to say. Truly, this show baffles my soul. Um, I don't quite even know how to tackle it. Well, what do you mean? Like, the songs kind of blur together. It is an operetta where they kind of all, it's not exactly like, oh, a song starting up. It's always a song. Yeah, it does. So these type of shows, it does get difficult to, like, cover Remember which moment songs. is which. 
Yeah, because like you're, we're looking at a list here. Usually when we look at a list of songs, there's like 10. We're yeah. looking at a list of like 40 songs, probably. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, and it's like, wait, so which one was which? <laughs> and yeah. you're just um, kind of like baffled. Uh, not baffled, you're daunted. Very much daunted. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's very, it's overwhelming. The thing is too, there was a lot of really great songs, but it's more that it's not that there was individual songs that felt really good. It was that the entire piece as a whole felt really good. Yeah. Um, it does. And uh, like, there's so many compilations. Like there's not like when you Google Elizabeth Doth musical in YouTube, um, you see compilations more than individual songs. Like the top ones are Elizabeth, but it's only death, <laughs> death scenes. <laughs> That's the reason I want Elizabeth, but it's only Leishman scenes. Like, it is not a show where it's like, everyone's looking up the Phantom of the Opera or Music of the Night. It's like, I want to see my sexy devil boy. I want to see how sexy it is. What if we make a tier list of Euro musicals? That sounds like a plan. That sounds great. I will... Yes, you want to type that? Or I'll... T- I will... T- I will type you. I, will I type. like, okay, Europe here in the school, not West End tier list. There are, okay, rank it now. Right, I'm putting it at the bottom of this doc so we can uh, oh, go back God, to Oh, God, there's later. so many of these. Holy shit. Okay, you got so A, B, C, D. So we're going to do a tier list of these. Uh, Notre Dame de Paris. Okay, so the thing here, uh, okay, so I go A, B, C, D, right? We're yeah. not going to do, we're not going to do, do S, S, we're not going to do F. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say we just put that in A. Um, though maybe it moves down if we remember something or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tons de Vampire. Um, which oh, yeah, I think so with B, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Maybe yeah. C. B, no, maybe C. this is the Total Eclipse one. That's C. I yeah, think that's, that's the Total Eclipse of Heart one. Yeah, I watched that one actually. Yeah. I think that's C. Yeah. Now we have like four Draculas. One, two, three, four, five, five, six Draculas. We only covered one of them, haven't we? Yeah, which yes, one we is have. It? The Dracula well, we covered. This is I the Frank like... Wildhorn one, which is the bad one. Okay, so that's automatic. Yeah, yeah. The Frank Wildhorn one is automatic bottom tier. D e, tier. D, D, D. Oh, so it's not even in. <laughs> okay. Um, Mozart, the Dracula, Opera Rock. Mozart, the Opera Rock, uh, at least B tier. Maybe A? I think that's A. Yeah, I'm going to say A. And... What else have we covered in here? God. Yeah, that's, Rebecca? That's on the show. Yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca. I think Rebecca is. B. Mm, B? I think B. I think it has enough going for it that I, I'd still put it in B. And I think, um, if I'm not wrong, that is all of them. Because these are specifically excluding West End. Didn't we cover Dracula as well? Like, not the Frank Wildhorn one? Um, what was that? Didn't we cover, like, a Dracula version that wasn't the no, Frank Wildhorn one? No, that was Tons the Vampire. Oh, and Elizabeth. Oh, okay. We gotta put Elizabeth in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's oh really Elizabeth. Good. I think Elizabeth top- is... B, but above, well, it might even be A. Yeah, I think it's I don't A. Know. I think it's A. The, right. the music is, is Honestly, so I'd solid. Honestly, I put Elizabeth above Notre Dame, but below Mozart. I Yeah, Mozart was really good. Is that really all the ones we've covered? I feel like we've done more. Um, Notre, or Der Glockner von Notre Dame, which isn't on here, I'd put in there, and I'd put that right above oh, yeah, Notre yeah. Dame de Paris. Yeah, okay. You'd put it above? Uh, yeah, I'd put the, I, uh, but above Notre Dame de Paris, yes. Oh wait, it's Notre Dame de Paris. That's is that the that's non- a French Disney one. one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so we're we're all over the place now. Uh, do you want to do you want to include opera? Do you want to include the uh, oh the fucking yeah Mozart we covered Mozart the Magic uh, Flute. Um, I put that m- above Rebecca. I put that in B. Yeah, I above put that in Notre B, Dame above... de Paris. Yeah. Okay, I wrote uh, all we, this we, down. It's we... fine. This is a fucking mess, guys. <laughs> this I wrote worst it down. musicals okay. of cheese episode ever. Just write it. Make that hashtag. Okay. God. And okay, so our tier list here of yes. European, we have yes. n- at number one Mozart Lopper Rock. Mozart. I have the La ones Opera that aren't Rock. on the tier list too. Right Perfect. Then Elizabeth. Th- then, then Elizabeth. Then Der Glockner von Notre Dame. Then Notre Dame. Then Notre Dame de Perry. Then Rebecca. Then Tons no, no, de Vampire. You forgot Magic Flute. Magic oh, the flute. Magic Flute is above uh, Notre Dame de Perry, but below Der Glockner von Notre Dame. So it's above yes. Rebecca, yeah. Yes. Um, then Tons der Vampire, then Dracula. Frank Wildhorn's Dracula. Frank Wildhorn Dracula. Frank Wildhorn's Dracula. Not Dracula. any of the other Dracula. Not any of the other 500 other ones. Which we can't judge yet because we haven't seen We them. haven't seen all of the Draculas. 
No, but this if is... If you notice anything, this is a very top-heavy list. Yeah. For the Pacers uh, who are watching this, <laughs> you see this. But now we have this whole list of other ones that honestly look pretty interesting. What the fuck is 49 Shades of Grey? I don't... <laughs> what? I'm Googling that. <laughs> there's one less. They removed um, one of the Shades of Grey. And then there's the Frankenstein musical, which I've heard is interesting. Um, not boring. Um, Can we get a, a Creature from the Black Lagoon musical? I think there is one. We it, No, it's, that's like, Toxic we got, Avenger. We got a bunch of... Oh, wait, there is one. It only played in Universal Studios. Yes. Like oh, that a doesn't year. fucking count. Does it was it? in the upper lot for from 2009 to 2010. Who did the score, though? Yeah, a Maxwell Green made a video on this. If you want detail and like, want to see what it looks like, by the okay. way, uh, the Creature of the Black Lagoon musical. Um, but I don't know who composed it. So, what is our overall thoughts on a Elizabeth Das musical and our cheese rating, Andrew? Well, my main overall thought is that we didn't do it justice. But nope. honestly, you nope, should go all. find a fucking version of this and fucking watch it because it's fucking solid. It's solid. Am I wrong? No, it's great. It's, you're right. Like you're right. it's very hard. It's difficult to discuss. It's it's not an easy thing to talk about, and it's something that I feel like we should have if pre- you're prepared better. <laughs> if you're interested in these Euro musicals, though, like you can find them places, and you should fucking watch them. Don't get intimidated by the fact that they're not in English. Like just fucking, just fucking watch it. <laughs> Truly, I, I know um, it'll be daunting, but my God, there's so many things on YouTube that can get you into this properly. Yeah. Even like just a compilation to get started. Just jump in slowly if you need. Yes. Don't be afraid of the subtitles. Okay. That goes for movies too. Like for fuck's yeah. sake. Some people just just watch some fucking foreign films. My God. Yeah. Complaining oh it's all Marvel movies. Go watch something not in English, you fucking idiot. Yeah. My God. Just if you haven't seen Parasite, just start there. I mean, it won the fucking yeah. movie thing. <laughs> what, what did it win? <laughs> it won the, the movie thing. Oscar. It won the movie award. The the gamer's choice award. The gamer's Go choice. fucking watch. <laughs> What was its no, IGN gamers rating? Hate that movie. It, Joker didn't win because of it. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that. It was that year. Yeah, Parasite is everything that Joker should have been. Like I don't even fucking care. Exactly. Parasite is literally Joker, but better. <laughs> I, Put that I, on I watched Joker with my significant other, and if he told me I thought that movie was amazing, I was gonna consider dumping him because I hated it that much. I'm just excited for Joker too. He hated also, it. Also, my cheese God. rating. My cheese rating is. Mond Seer, which is a uh, popular Austrian cheese. All right. Fair enough. Joker 2, gonna be a musical. Definitely gonna make everyone see it. I mean, we gotta. I know. Joker 2 is easy because it made some money. It la, is. la, 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 la. Okay, I'm excited for Joker 2. Yeah, I I'm, seen, excited I'm Joker not gonna two. watch Joker 1 either. No, you like, shouldn't. Don't ex- I'm no, I'm not going to. I'm just. It. I'm, Too late. I'm going straight into Joker 2. The only thing I've seen from Joker 1 is the meme edits of him uh, <laughs> shooting Alec Baldwin or whatever. <laughs> <Not> Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Robert De Niro. Bobby De Niro. <laughs> you're laughing. You, you confused me for Alec Baldwin and you're laughing. Yeah, I finished, I finished Musical Cheese video a few years ago and Jess said, one more thing, I want you to include the De Niro meme from Joker. And I'm like, what? And then I looked it you up. Get what I was you like, fucking oh. deserve. <laughs> You're oh, laughing. Got it. They 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 pretended it was a prom night, and you're laughing. Yeah, I didn't get the joke <laughs> until I googled the meme, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's why this is funny." Okay, got it. <laughs> it was, I think we were criticizing the girl that played Emma in that movie. Like they they're they're making fun of you, and you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a smiling when being bullied. It's fucking awful. Anyway, all right. That movie's I'll- not good. It's not. Anyway, should I give my cheese ratings? This yes, episode's please. fucking chaotic. Uh, I like this a lot. The main character has my name, so it, it's. I find these movies weird because they kept saying it, and I'm like, what What do you want from me, Germany? Like, I'm right here. Like, It's weird hearing your own name for like two hours straight. Also, weird fun fact I found out while doing all this research. The date of her assassination is my legitimate actual birthday. What? Reborn. Yes, I am the reincarnation of this random Austrian woman, clearly. Andrew, clearly. you gotta stab this Empress bitch. I'm I'm on it. Andrew, please don't stab me. <laughs> my my anarchy calls me. Must stab people named Elizabeth. <laughs> <Her boy. laughs> people. But yeah, that was weird. Uh I like this a lot. I, I don't I don't wanna like get into details about it because like just watch it. 
Like, you need just experience this for yourself. It's an experience. Yeah, don't be afraid of the German or the subtitles. Like, engage in it as a story. That's all you really need to do. Like, you might need to read a little, but that's fine. Just put down your phones for 10 seconds or whatever. Like, engage with it. Uh, I'm going to give it Lüneburg cheese, which is another popular Austrian cheese. I think Andrew and I are reading the same exact article. So I fucking hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um they all said it this show's good it's very interesting um i once again i felt emotionally kind of apathetic towards it which frustrated me uh more than i would like but visually it is a treat for the eyes the ears it's a sensation to experience and imagine seeing it live and i really get chills so if you are not an american uh go go check that out and my cheese rating is a cheese called blue elizabeth um, it's a semi-soft blue veined farm cheese made with organic raw cow's milk. You know who also hates blue cheese? Our patrons. Blue cheese hates you. Oh yes. Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for listening. Please follow us on iTunes and Spotify at Musicals with Cheese. Leave a little comment. Apparently you can comment on Spotify now and we will read them on the podcast because it's fun. Um, please follow us on Twitter at Cheesy Musicals, Patreon Musicals with Cheese, Instagram Musicals with Cheese, YouTube page Musicals with Cheese. Liz is working on a couple videos over there. It's going to be fun. Our patron only podcast is Patreon with Cheese. Email us at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our keeper of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. This show is edited by Andrew DeWolf and I'm betting he's going to do a pretty heavy edit on this episode. Um, I'm gonna so do a great job. He will give he will. give give him a salute. Our reviews theme was created by Robin Nash of IOU Music UK. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform and for not kicking us off. For you know, just this episode is chaos. We should be kicked off for this. Um, all right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>